watch it. If you think of it as a journey, what has been most what has been most difficult about the journey, and where are you now? The journey is most difficult when you feel alone. The most essential part of journeying out of the dark parts of mental illness and into the managed parts, the functional parts, the parts where you're able to deal with it, is the people in your lives. In in your life, that is what is most essential, and uh, you know your medication. Um, that too. Uh, the thing that is um, most promising to me about my journey is that I'm able to live day to day in a highly functional manner when I'm able to live day to day in a highly functional manner and I'm able to accept the periods where I just fall to pieces. You know, those are pieces of my life that I just deal with. You know, you fall to pieces, you pick up the pieces, you go on. And so that has given me a certain sense of acceptance in my life that whatever comes is going to come. You know, whatever happens is going to happen and I can manage and I can get through it no matter what. What other kinds of things are you writing? The next book is a novel. It's uh, actually quite a leap for me. It's a historical novel starting back in the late uh, 1800s and following all the way through to Iraq. Um, it's about American wars. It's about fathers and sons. It's about um, whether or not this country has been able to fulfill some of its dreams. Uh, and it's an incredibly ambitious novel, and many times I'm like, what am I thinking? <laughs> Why have I undertaken this project? But at the same time, I'm having a wonderful time working on it because it is a creative endeavor that isn't easy. You know, I'm, it's a nice, chewy project, you know, and so I'm, you know, I'm digging in. You also do columns, you do speaking, mm -hmm. you do a lot of other things. Yeah, I do a lot of lecturing on eating disorders, on mental health, and on writing. I teach creative writing periodically. Um, I am not doing any journalism right at this time because this, you know, this novel has taken over my life, uh, as they do. Um, but I will begin writing essays again further later on this year. And um, where can people find out more information about Maria Hornbacher and what she's doing? The easiest way is mariahornbacher.com, my, my website. You can get in touch with me that way. You can read about the history of the bio. You can get involved in the conversations. I write an almost daily blog, so that's the good place to go. Okay. And I think that you said you'd be willing to read to us just a little a bit little more. A little teeny bit more. I've got a tiny little section I can read. This is, you know, one of those places where you start picking up the pieces after they fall apart. And then all of a sudden, it's day. I open my eyes and squint in the white light pouring in through the windows. I assess the situation. I am in a room. Upon further consideration, I am in my room at home. I am in bed, probably my bed, unless they've moved someone else's bed in here, though I can't imagine why they would do that. So I think very groggily, probably, probably not. My head feels like it's wrapped in cotton batting and weighs a ton. I'm clearly drugged. I have no idea what day it is or even what season of the year. I dimly remember a hospital, but I can't remember if I was in it yesterday or if I'm remembering the last time or the time before that. I wonder how long I've been gone. Surely somebody around here knows. I crawl out of bed, unsteady on my legs. I make my way down the hallway, holding onto the wall. I wander into the kitchen and stand there in my gross pajamas, weak, filthy, hungry, cold. Looks like summer. The afternoon light spills in through the long wall of windows. All is white light. I begin to get confused, my mind spooling out in front of me, and then I snap out of it and look around the room. There they are, lounging around. Megan and my mother are having a chat at the kitchen table. My father is, as usual, making a turkey. Christy and Jeff are paging through Vogue and discussing the importance of the excellent handbag. Jeff has exceptional taste. My aunt and uncle are reading the paper. Everyone looks up and sees me and stops. The door opens and Ruth comes in. She stops. There is a long silence. No one knows what to say because they don't know yet if I'm totally mad or suddenly sane or what strange sequence of words will come rolling out of my mouth this time. We wait. I brought eclairs, Ruth finally says, absurdly. She gestures vaguely with the bakery box. I think this over, weaving side to side. Okay, I croak. I look at my husband. Hello, I say. I think a minute more, looking at the assemblage of people in my living room. How long was I crazy? I ask no one in particular. Jeff shrugs, turning a page. Couple of weeks, he says. What day is it? I try to shake the fog out of my skull. Saturday, he says. What month? August. Do you remember the hospital? Sort of. When did I go in? Last month. They changed your meds. You got zapped. Oh, 
I say and fall over. Ruth comes over and picks me up. She gives me a plate with any Claire. I look at it for a while. Now sit down, she instructs. I look at the chair she is holding out. Right, I say. I sit. Now eat, she says. I take a bite. Everyone sighs in relief. I'm back. Time begins again. That's what madness looks like. A small woman in baggy red pajamas sitting on a kitchen chair, her feet dangling above the floor, trying to figure out how to eat an eclair while everyone she knows and loves watches her closely, as if she's a rat in a cage to see what will happen next. And soon I will go upstairs, peel off the filthy red pajamas, get dressed, and come back down to sit with them. They will know I am well as soon as I laugh. I always do. Thank you, Maria Hornbach. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I'm all set. All right. Um, I'd like to say, buy this book. <laughs> I didn't tell her to say that. <laughs> it's fabulous. Um, and I'd like to thank you, Maria. Thanks to our audience. I'd like to thank our director, Paul Augustin, our crew, Jacob Gulliver, Joey Grialva, and Julie Madkey. And uh, thank the audience here for being so patient and wonderful. And uh, for location images, iDream.tv, I'm Edie French. Enjoy the party. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>